All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at how to use Photoshop and Illustrator to add a very cool uh, kind of rough edge effect around some of your photos. Now, it's kind of I'm kind of taking this off of a tutorial I did almost a year ago um, on the Nat Member website where I actually gave you custom shapes that you could download and do something very similar. But today, I'm going to show you how you can kind of create your own edges inside Illustrator. And you're probably wondering what the benefit is. Well, the benefit, and I'll show you at the end, is that you can it, it kind of creates a little mask here but you can resize this mask as much as you want and you're not going to get any kind of pixelated edges where if you did it with a traditional mask inside Photoshop you might get some pixelated edges here so let's take a look here this is the photo we are going to start out with and this is what we'll end up with here so let's uh, get that photo we'll start out with and then I'm going to switch over to Illustrator now, I've got Illustrator open. I'm going to just press Control or Command and the letter N, and that's going to create a new file for me. And just incidentally, by the way, I did a tutorial very similar to this um, on Photoshop TV about a month ago. And here's the thing. I'm going to go into way more detail on how to do this and actually show you uh, some ways that make it a lot easier and more flexible than I could. I, you, we just don't have a lot of time in those TV shows. And uh, and honestly, we've got a lot of questions on it. And, you know, it, there's just a lot of things you could do with this. So I'm going to take, I, I got all the time in the world here. So I'm really going to take some time to actually show you how you can create this in Illustrator and, and how to get the most out of what you're doing here. Okay, so that said, First thing that we'll want to do here is go to the paintbrush tool inside Illustrator, select that tool, and then look over to the right in your brushes palette. Now one of the very first default brushes you should see here is called Chalk Scribble. And I like this brush, but you can go down here and you'll see that there's a lot of other brushes. You can also always uh, just go and click on that little flyout menu for the brushes palette and you can open up new brush libraries too. And there's a lot of them in Illustrator, but I really like the default one right here. Now, I'm going to take my brush here, and I'm just going to paint a stroke down the left here. And then I'm going to paint some more and just kind of click and drag. And if you've got your Illustrator preferences uh, set up the way I do, sometimes when you click and drag, it may actually delete a stroke in there and, and reposition. And that's fine. Just kind of move your cursor a little bit further away, and you can actually get it to lay down a new brush stroke for you. So just go ahead and do that a few times here and you can see they're kind of thin and they're kind of they're, it doesn't look the way we want it to look but here's how you can change it just go grab your selection tool just select them all or you could just press control or command a uh, to select all like you can in Photoshop and then go to your stroke palette and again that's just right under your window menu you can go down the stroke if you don't see it go to your stroke palette and under weight start increasing the weight of these strokes until you kind of get that edge effect that we're looking for and that's that's looking pretty good here that's what I was looking for in this so I'm gonna leave it at that now at this point if you were to try to paste this into Photoshop it really wouldn't look the way that you had intended to look so what you'll need to do is you need to do what's called expanding this so I'm gonna go to the object menu and you'll see what expand does here it's just easier to demonstrate just go to the object menu and choose expand appearance. Make sure you have all those brush strokes selected. See what happens? It changed them from brush strokes to now it's a path. And it is one ugly path. If you can see here, these are all points in here. Look at that. These are all points on the path. It's just ugly. Now what happens is if you try to paste this into Photoshop, it could take a while because Photoshop's got to render every single point here, and, and there's probably tens of thousands of them in here. So here's the trick, and here's something I didn't show on Photoshop TV. What you want to do is go to the window menu, go down to Pathfinder. That opens up a little palette here. Hold down your Alt key on the PC or your Option key on a Mac, and click on this very first one here. Make sure you select all this again. Again, Control or Command A to select it all. Then hold down your Alt or your Option key and click on this very first option here. And it might take a couple seconds for Illustrator to do it, but what it's going to do, it's going to combine all those shapes into one path. So it's still a somewhat complicated path here around the edges, but it's a lot more simple than it was before we actually did this. And then you can take it a step further. You could always go to Object, go down to Path, and then choose Simplify. 
and you could even simplify the path a little bit more if you wanted to and simplify just tends to remove some of the points here so you can click the preview button get a little preview sample there and you can actually simplify it even more but I'm going to leave it as it is and now again select all and then copy it now we're going to go back over to Photoshop now once you're inside Photoshop here chances are you'll be working on a photo let's go ahead and hide the other one chances are you'll be working on a photo and that photo may be a background layer so the first thing you need to do is convert it to a regular layer in order to do that I'm just gonna hold down the alter the option key and just double click on it and that converts it to a layer for me now go up to the layer menu instead of layer mask which you might be used to go down the vector mask and choose hide all and this is gonna hide the entire layer and don't do anything else. Don't click in your layers palette because right now that vector mask is it's active. It's it's what is targeted here in Photoshop. So don't do anything else. Just press Control or Command V. You'll see the little paste dialog here. Choose path from the options list and click OK. And it pastes that path right here into Photoshop for you. And it did it onto that vector mask so now you can see here if I start to extend the edges you can see the path and you can see some of the background behind it it's just a little bit too big at this point so what I'm going to do is press control or command T let's zoom out a little bit here control or command T brings up free transform so they're just like any object in Photoshop you can free transform a path too so I'm going to just uh, hold down my shift key make that path a little bit smaller maybe move it up so I can see a little bit more of the hair here and then I can even make it longer if I want when you're done just press the enter key now I'm still seeing all these points and it's not looking quite the way I want so to add a finishing touch here what you want to do is create a new layer and then drag that layer right below the original photo layer here and then just fill it with white now you're starting to get a little bit closer, but the last finishing touch is double click on your photo layer. Okay, opens up the layer style dialog box, add a drop shadow and take a look at that. See how it starts to lift the photo off the page here? Maybe bump up the size a little bit, drop down the opacity, but look at that. It really starts to lift those edges off of the page here, probably drop the opacity a little more, and then click OK. We can zoom in a little bit here. Now, what's really cool about doing this, see it gives you that nice ripped effect. What's cool about doing this, if I didn't do it as a vector mask, if I did it as a layer mask, well, if I try to click on this vector mask, now, don't click on the layer, click on the vector mask so you can see the outline of the path here. Press Control or Command T, go into Free Transform, and I can make it really tiny. So I can press Enter. So I've, I've really resized the vector mask, and I'm doing it dramatically here. But now press Control or Command T again, and then make it large again. Watch what happens. See, it still retains all that crisp edge quality that I had the first time when I pasted it in. So that's why it's a cool, uh, it's a cool technique to be able to use Illustrator to create these edges because you get a lot more flexibility. And honestly, inside Illustrator, there's a lot of those brushes I showed you. Right here, let's flip back over here inside the brush palette here. If you click on the little flyout menu, go down to open brush library, you'll see a lot of different brushes in there. There's borders, there's textures, there's a lot. So you've got a lot of different effects that you can create with it. So hope you enjoyed this and uh, thanks for watching and we will see you again next time.